guys today we're going to be solving lead code question 935 night tyler this is not an easy problem it's actually a perfect medium level problem it's not the most intuitive um it does not have the most intuitive of solutions it is um, all, the also a problem with this uh, problem is the problem statement itself which has not been explained well on lead code i think and um, actually no the question has been explained when the solution hasn't been explained well anyway uh, so we have to return the total number of distinct numbers that we can generate while moving like a knight on a keypad and uh, all our moves have to be valid the number of steps that we can take has been given to us as an input um and we have to modulo our operations and our result by a huge number that's been given there it that may look a little scary that part but it's really not um cool uh, i think i'll get to explaining how this will go this is a recursive uh, problem and we're going to solve this using dynamic programming um so i'll define the recursive structure first uh, so we have to return the total number of distinct numbers that we can generate while moving like a knight on this keypad now assume f is a function and uh, okay let's suppose we have taken n steps and the last digit that we pressed is 4 actually no let's say the last digit that we pressed on uh, the keypad is 1 and we have taken n steps now how can we reach 1 like what are ways to reach 1 on the keypad while traversing like a knight if i have reached one i must have been at eight or at six before one right that because that's the only possibility that's the only way to reach one while moving like a knight on this keypad and we spent one step in moving from eight to one or we spent one step in moving from six to one so basically our recursive if f uh, gives us a total number of distinct numbers that can be generated by taking n steps and ending on one eventually uh, we can define our recursive st uh, structure as follows we would have to have reached six before this in n minus one steps and we have to sum that with the possibility of reaching eight with n minus one steps right this is our recursive structure and similarly, we would have recursive structure for f of 2 comma n, f of 3 comma n, and so on for all the 10, all the 10 digits. Now, if you think about it, um, if we try to formulate the final solution, it will be the summation of all, okay, how many ways are there for us to end a sequence of tapping the number, tapping the digits? It's um it so the uh, basically what i'm trying to say is our final solution would be the summation of f of 0 comma n plus f of 1 comma n plus f of 2 comma n until f of 9 comma n right that that would cover all possibilities because any sequence of tapping will always end on one of these digits uh, or one of the 10 digits and this summation will return so it can either end on 0 or 1 and this summation will return the total number of distinct numbers that can be generated so this it would be our final answer and our and our solution would be based on this recursive structure cool that's that's all we need now um, i think it would be better if i explain how the dp part will go actually how the dp table would look so it is easier for us to visualize the solution as we are coding it uh it's uh, okay i'll just go ahead and um, construct I'll, I'll just show you how the dp table would be created it would be created from left actually i'll just so in our dp table the columns would represent the the 10 digits and uh, the rows would represent the number of steps taken cool so 
that means that um, our uh, if n is a total number of steps that we can take um, uh, the dimensions of our dp table would be n plus 1 cross 10 yeah uh, we're going to add one um, for the for one row with zero steps as well that's why it becomes n plus 1 okay now let's see one two three four five six seven uh, eight nine I'll, i should probably start with zero cool these are the columns now zero steps one step two step three step assuming n equals three cool so this is how our table would look okay um we will initialize the row zero with zeros okay please and uh, ignore the periods that you can see following the zeros that's something uh, that's the lead code editor inserting that okay because if you take zero steps there are there are zero numbers that can be generated right um then we will also prefill this dp table with one for row row one because sorry because if you take one step and you end on i mean so what uh, if f let's say what does f of 1 comma 4 represent it represents that we have taken one step i'm sorry actually yeah yeah uh, it represents that we have taken one step and we have ended on four what that basically means is that i just tapped four right that's one only one distinct number that can be generated or if you if you look at f of one comma five, what that means is I took one step and I ended on five, and uh, I uh, and I ended on five, and th that would mean that I've just tapped on five. Now what I've realized just now is that I um, the notation that I gave for the recursive solution is reversed. I, I mean I don't want you to get confused in what how the DP table how i have written the dp table and how i have written the recursive it's reverse it should actually be f of n comma one just for the sake of notation so that there's no confusion it's still the same thing taking n minus one steps okay f of n comma two f of n comma three i'm sorry about this And so on where f is the total number of distinct numbers that can be generated uh, while traveling while completing n steps and ending on the digit on the digit x like x representing the second parameter of, of f um okay so i'm sorry about that little detour going back to the dp table uh let's say so uh, we'll prefill our dp table the row zero and our row one of the dp table with these values we'll just prefill it and then we'll uh, get into the for loop and the construction of the dp table in general the dp table would be generated from top to down from left to right what that means is we will next fill f of say f of 0 comma uh, i'm sorry f of 2 comma 0 okay that what that means is 
we took two steps and we ended on zero now what are ways to end on how can how could we have ended on zero it could have been with one step we took one step from four or we took one step from six right six to zero or four to zero and what that means is i'm going to sum this f of, oh sorry this and this and this will become two right and uh, let's say let's also fill it for this f of this is zero one two three four five six and let's do a trial run for f for two comma six meaning we have taken two steps in total and ended on six now what are ways to end on six we could have either come from zero from seven or from one so this will become f of one comma uh, sorry f of one comma one plus f of one comma seven plus f of one comma zero which will become three uh, uh, this will become three right and uh, i fill that uh, randomly but uh, i just want to uh, i want you to note that it will these values will be filled before the three it will be filled from left to right i just showed this for the sake of illustration cool uh, this is how our dp table will be generated the final solution will be the summation of this the last row of this dp table and um, it's possible that the the thing is uh, this problem uh, we can recur very wildly uh, with even with small values of n uh, even in the hundreds so which is why we have to do the mod because it will just lead to integer uh, overflow as we code we we'll, we will understand where we need to put that mod in there are actually uh, only two places that you put, need to put the mod in with that i think um, we can start with the coding of the problem this is all uh, this is the entire concept of this problem so let's just proceed to the solution so i'm going to keep this here i'm just going to comment it out because i think it would be useful for us to refer to uh, i have also created a paths array right here um, <clears throat> what that i've already written it from before it's not something that lead code gave us uh, i didn't want to spend too much time on creating that i'll just explain what that is so the basically parts of the element at index i in the paths array will contain an array of all the digits that can reach index i Cool. I'll explain that uh, with an example. Suppose path of one, path of one. This will contain all the numbers that can reach one. Cool. So as you can see on the keypad, you can reach one from six or from eight while traveling like a knight, right? So that is all that the path variable holds, and it will help us in writing the final solution. I think with that we can proceed to the coding part so I'm going to start with that cool defining the mod first one two three four five six seven eight and seven cool creating the dpra the syntax in swift to create a dpra a 2d array is very convoluted but um, please don't be intimidated by this it's only syntax to create a 2d array mm, i'm initializing all values as one number of rows 10 and n plus one okay this will create um 2d array of n plus one 10 that's it cool um, 
we go so uh, all the array values are already zero but the row one of the dp table has to be one so i'm going to write that next for i in zero to nine dp of one comma i equals one now let's go ahead and fill the main array like the rest of the 2d array so for all rows since we are filling from top to bottom and row like filling every filling one row in its entirety then moving on to the next row filling that row in entirety so uh, our outer loop will loop along the rows and um, the inner loop will row along the columns that is the number of digits So, uh, please note that there are 10 digits, which is why there's less than 10 there, 0 to 9, right? 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. These are the 10 digits that we need to consider. So, the second loop will go from 0 to less than 10, that is 0 to 9. Okay, and then for all the, so J will be the current digit that we are considering. and parts of this j so this p will loop along all the numbers that can read j cool so dp of i comma j will be we have to sum this up with this Right, this is from the recursive relation that I explained earlier. <clears throat> so i is the number of steps, which is why we are doing i minus one here for all the digits that can reach j. Now, this is where the mod comes into the picture for very, like even for small values when n, n meaning I'm saying even if it's 161 or something, it's going to grow wildly. This is where we'll put in the mod operation. This is the first place where we'll put in the mod operation. Okay, and uh, what we need to do is dp of j will be mod. Cool. Okay. That's it. At this point, our 2d dp array is fully populated. And now we have to construct the final solution, which will be the summation of all the elements in the last row of the DP table. Our result equal to zero. And we have to return result mod. Again, this is the second uh, <coughs> place where we have to use the mod. These are the only two places. And we are modding this because as you can see, it's mentioned that the answer may be very large. So we have to mod it with this number. Let's construct result now. This is a simple summation again. Only summing the last row. DP of N, which will be the last row. That's it, guys. That's it. Just checking to see if I've made a mistake anywhere. I think we're good. I'm just going to run this. Okay, that works. Wow, that works. Uh, cool, guys. Uh, I hope I did a decent job in explaining the solution. I personally had a tough time understanding this problem, understanding the solution when I initially, when I picked it up for the first time. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. I hope this video was worth your time. Uh, good luck. Stay safe. Bye.